I think I'm going to stop and paint that barn. So, I decided not to finish up this painting on site. I think I'm just going to finish up my bike ride and head back home. But I guess I should show some of the on-site painting and sketching I did first. I set up near this cool barn with the intention of doing an amazing painting. That's how I think all my excursions will go. But as you can see by my coat, it's getting a little chilly. Winter will come soon. The supplies I chose to bring weren't really what I wished I would have brought. I used a very limited set of colors from my set of Caran d'Ache water-soluble pencils. I didn't feel like I had the right colors for that barn. And you can hear by the scratchy sounds that I'm using a pre-prepared watercolor artboard that I put some rough pastel ground on. I like that rough surface because it allows me to do a messy underpainting and worry about the details later. You'll see later on that I'm going to finish this up with non-water soluble pencils to get the highlights and details. I think it's a pretty good combination for me. You can check my description for the links to the products I use. I'm staying pretty light on this underpainting while I'm trying to get the basic shapes. I want to be able to recover from any mistakes I make. Drawing correct perspectives of buildings is hard for me, but I keep trying. I'm sure I'll have to correct it plenty as I go along. I hope by sharing my process with the good parts and the bad parts that it'll help you to learn something about your own practice. Anyway, I'm just going to focus on the color notes and basic feel of the place. For me, it ingrains it in my memory more if I take the time to sketch on site. Plus, it's a bit more fun than simply taking a picture and leaving. This isn't the first time I've attempted to paint this barn. Here are a few of my previous attempts. Too often, I think I have to pick a brand new scene every time I set out to paint. That's not necessary. Often when I do it again, I see new things I can try. If I were a musician, I'd probably play the same song over and over. It seems we should be able to do that with sketching and painting, too. I got this rooftop way too dark, so I'm attempting to remove some of the color with this paper towel. It worked okay, but I'll have to keep fixing as I go. I spend way too much time on the details of this window and roof line with this red pencil. I guess I do it slowly because I'm thinking through the basic shapes again. I've heard it said that you can't paint yourself out of a bad drawing. I suppose that's true, but the great thing about water-soluble pencils on this rough surface is that I'll be able to fix a bunch of things. I mentioned earlier that I had a small set of pencils. This was the only red pencil I had, and it feels like it's completely the wrong color. It needs to be a bit warmer. This almost looks pink when I wet it. I spent so much time on that drawing that it might surprise you that I ended up washing it all away. I guess I kind of knew I would. It's all part of the process. I'm trying green ochre to try to tone down this overly saturated red, and it sort of works, but this is about the point that I decided that I needed to finish this up at home. Besides, the sun is going down, so I'll take my final reference shots and ride back down the path. When I get home, I have all my pencils, and I test my theory that I can get a clean white mark over the underpainting. Looks like I can with that rough sandy surface. I also realize that when I look at my reference photo that my proportions aren't quite right. When I look at it on my phone's painting app, I can trace the lines on the actual barn photo and overlay them on a photo of my painting and see that I'm off. This helps me see that I need to fix that roof line and extend the sides a bit. And that should be easy to do. This time I'm using a more orangey warm red than that red I had on site. I think that looks a bit better. I can also extend that orange as the base layer for those background trees and the mountain behind it. My favorite thing to do is wet these watercolor pencils. So fun and so vibrant. It's a really cool way for me to paint. Super clean and I just mix right on the paper. It's easy to leave the whole painting too light though until you get the darkest portions established. So I'm going to use the dark indigo color for the windows and the interior shadows of those doors.
I'm tempted to speed this video up at this point, but I got a comment from a commenter, thank you by the way, on a previous video that they wouldn't mind seeing me not speed up the video. So I'm going to try that on this one. Go a little bit slower. You'll have to let me know of your preference for how long these videos should be. Everybody has a different preference, I suppose. I know I kind of have a short attention span when I watch other artists on YouTube, and I'm still trying to strike the right balance with my own. Those really dark darks help give me the courage to darken the sky and even the barn a bit more, which is good since I can see a little bit of bluish purple in addition to the oranges in that barn. I think those marks that can be made on that already wet surface are really interesting and dynamic. I'm glad I have more colors to work with at home. I'm also glad these whites lay on so well with this sandpaper-like surface. I'm using non-water soluble pencils here and I wouldn't be able to do this with traditional paper surfaces. Traditionally, pencil artists and watercolorists, as I understand it, have to preserve the whites from the beginning because watercolor and pencils are more transparent. But as you can see, preserving the light areas doesn't really work with my style. I'm not all that patient. Maybe one day. Anyway, that pastel ground I used is starting to be my secret weapon because it lets me change my mind on how I approach the painting. There are multiple pastel papers and surfaces though that would help you accomplish the same thing. So you don't really have to use the pastel ground like I did. It's just an option. In fact, I've tried several different surfaces in my videos. So be sure to check those other ones out. I like this orange underpainting for the trees and those serve as some of the highlights. But now it's time to do the darks there too. And I'm only using non-water soluble pencils from here on out. Mostly because they're a little bit easier for the detailed work. I like to do the underpainting and the water soluble pencils and then move to non water soluble pencils. And often I like to try to let that underpainting peek through. It's more interesting that way. I'm making good progress on this barn painting, but to be honest, I wasn't sure if I'd ever get this far. It has literally taken me several months to get to this point. Part of that is because of the holidays. Part was because I started working on another painting I did uh, that was used for a gift. That was kind of fun. But I mostly paint because I like it and it's a relaxing hobby for me. And if I ever get to the point where it's not relaxing, I just stop because I don't want the anxiety of finishing a painting to keep me from enjoying it. So sometimes I jump around with my projects. That's why I started doing sketches for the shorts that you might have seen on my channel. Those smaller sketches are good practice for me. When I got to this point, I was just not sure how to do the foreground. I like the stuff stacked in front against the barn, but I'm sort of got stalled again. My son suggested putting in some chickens in the foreground, but I didn't remember any. Sometimes when I need inspiration to finish a painting, I go back to the site and work on it live again. But I waited so long on this one that winter came and brought shorter days and snow. Snow is pretty, but obviously not helpful here. But what do you know? There were some chickens in that coop. Anyway, the point of this little ramble and the point of this video for that matter is just to say, enjoy drawing and painting. and Don't get too worried about finishing it if you don't want to. Sure, I finish a lot of paintings and you will too, but there are a bunch I don't. I'm not sure if I'll completely finish this one. I'll keep looking at it and maybe I'll work on it or maybe I won't. Or maybe I'll wait for spring and those chickens will come out. And I can add them in there. We'll see. What do you think? How do you decide when a, you'll finish a painting? Let me know in the comments. I hope you won't be done with watching my videos though. If you like old barns like this one, I'd suggest this video next. Don't worry, I finished that barn. I thought it looked pretty good. Thanks for watching and exploring art with me. If you're still watching, thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. It gives me encouragement to keep going.